pollination for your hydroponic system. It's really important, especially if you're growing indoors or you have a hydroponic setup that's really self-contained. Now, you can probably get away without having to pollinate things yourselves. If your greenhouse, say, is outdoors or your setup is outdoors and insects and bugs and bees can make their way into your system and things should pollinate that way without any problem. But inside here, there are no bugs and there are no bees. So how are we going to go about doing this? Well, with one of these. This is your everyday paintbrush and it's going to be used to ensure that you don't have blossoms falling off your plant because it is not pollinating. The last thing that you want to have happen is to put in a bunch of work growing your plants, buying the nutrients, to grow them up big and green and not to have any fruit produce out of them. So we're going to use this guy to make sure these plants are producing some fruit. Now there's some alternatives to um, using the paintbrush. Uh, alternately, you can even just give the plants a bit of a shake. And that just might be enough to get some of the pollen floating around to pollinate the rest of your flowers. I've also got a fan going on there and the fan itself shakes the plants just a bit and that too can help with the pollination process. So I will start off by saying I have three different kinds of pepper plants in this system. I have jalapenos, I have uh, chili peppers, and I have bell peppers. So there's a very, very high risk that I will end up through cross-pollination with spicy bell peppers. Now, you might want to be doing this. You might want to cross-pollinate your plants. And if you do, right on. But if you don't, then I highly suggest that you do not grow plants, uh, different types of the same plant, in very close proximity. And that if you are going to be pollinating with a paintbrush, that you go and get three separate paintbrushes, or a paintbrush for every plant you have. You're not really going to, however, have to worry about cross pollinating tomato plants with tobacco plants and ending up with tomaco. So what I'm going to do here is find my mature flowers and they're going to have uh, full pollen sacs and they're going to have the stigma right in the middle and I'm going to come in with the brush and take the pollen from the side of the flower. I'm just going to put the brush in along the side and get some pollen on the brush and you can actually see there's a bit of pollen on there and I'm going to take the pollen from this flower and uh, pollinate the stigma of another flower. So there's one up here. I'm going to do this guy and brush that one onto the stigma. So you could just go through and get pollen from all your flowers onto the brush and then just start going around and pollinating the stigmas and you should notice that you will get some fruit on there within a few days and you can continue to pollinate as flowers pop up for two three days and keep going um, but that's that's pretty much it oh yes and you will need about two different flowers to do this you cannot use the pollen from one flower to pollinate the same the stigma of the same flower so in a few days you should notice that some of the flowers, hopefully they're not dropping off the plant anymore and that you actually see some fruit coming along and that's a really good sign that you are doing things right. So that's about it. Keep in mind there are some plants that are actually self-pollinating so this is a step that you could completely bypass if you were growing self-pollinating plants. Uh, I hope this video was of some help to you guys and that's about it like I said. So thanks for watching and I will see you on the next episode.